Good morning. What a wonderful Lake District team morning it is in the Lake District this morning. Lovely and fresh and crisp and damp <laughs> and all these lovely sheep. It's just beautiful here, it really is. So um, you're going to have a wonderful day today. Uh, we're driving now to uh, Windermere, so the, the town of Windermere, which is on the uh, lake side of um, the lake. <laughs> yeah, the lake, that would be where it'd be. Uh, Boness, it's called. So um, that's our, our pier port, uh, home of William Wordsworth home of Beatrix Potter. So in the village you'll find lots of uh, memorabilia to, to both of those iconic figures. Uh, there's a Beatrix Potter Museum, uh, lots of shops uh, and then there'll be lots of things in ode to the poet William Wordsworth. Um, so you can have a lovely wander around this morning. So this is the town of Windermere? Yes, that's right. Yeah. This is the town of Windermere. on the edge of the river and then by the time you've done that and come back you can walk directly up here straight o'clock 12 o'clock in head ahead of us and up the up the hill it's just a slow incline up the hill and then you can explore all of those lovely uh, shops and areas up there oh, a nice swan coming up to the shore here just paddling along we are on the MVT the 1500 teal. 1936 by Vickers Armstrong of Barham and Furness for the London Midlands Scottish Railway. Like her sister Swan, she was put together in Barrow, dismantled and transported to Lakeside in sections where she was put back together again prior to launching from the slipway where she still maintained today. She weighs 250 tonnes and is powered by two Volvo diesel engines. As built, she could carry over 700 passengers, although nowadays this has been reduced to a maximum of 533 passengers with a crew of six. Yeah, so that's why you sit here. It makes sense. Habited island on the lake. It has been lived on for hundreds of years. Bell Island. The current dwelling, visible through the trees, is a roundhouse, constructed in 1774 by Thomas English. In 1781, English sold the island and the new owner of Long Hall, as it was known then, was Isabella Kerwin of Workington Hall. She married her cousin, John Christian, who took Isabella's surname and the couple made Long Hall their residence. It was the Kerwins who planted a ring of trees around the island for privacy, but also, unfortunately, partly obscuring the view of the house at the same time. So fond of Windermere and the island was John Kerwin that he renamed the island Bella Isle after his wife. And over the years, this has become Bell Isle. A nice sailboat in the middle of this lake. It doesn't look like there's too much wind for it. It doesn't have too much movement. It looks like a train is coming. We might be getting off here. Yeah, look at that. That's the train station. Looks like we're getting ready to dock. got some propeller action going here and we're beginning we're going to have uh, the opportunity just to have lunch they've got a nice cafe uh, at the steam train at the steam train station but uh, I'm just feeling so generous that I can't stop treating you um, and so what I've organized is I've organized some uh, absolutely delicious the best scones that you'll ever eat. Um, so, a scone, people say scone, some say scone. I switch between the two because I get a bit confused, but I normally say scone. Uh, but yeah, you're supposed to say scone because uh, it's all scone when you've eaten it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> I'm on the last carriage. Down the last 
fishing out this way. I had to see the engine. Are you there? Sit. <laughs> Stay. Stay. <laughs> I love it. Good. Reserve for insight. So, Lakeside Station. Nice territory. You can see some of the smoke coming up from the steam locomotive. They're going past one of the villages on this train ride. I know. The next step, Waterford. Oh, we got a tunnel going here. Oh, the smoke from the steam locomotive. Oh, we're at the station of ladies and gentlemen. The yard There's two different ways of assembly to your scone. Um, so uh, you can uh, you obviously you cut them in half. So they're a Scottish pastry. Uh, a crumbly pastry. They do uh, they do originate from Scotland, but they are eaten all over the UK. But I, I always get these because they are the absolute best. They are delicious. Um, and so you have cream and jam on them, and they have the most insane clotted cream. It's like butter, um, and it's so delicious. It'll make you dribble. Um, and jam, strawberry jam. So you can either put your, there's two schools of thought. You can either put the cream on first, and the jam on top or you can put the jam on and then the cream on my order of assembly is cream and jam and I think anybody who does it the other way around uh, is just very strange to be honest. <laughs> but if you'd like to give if you'd like to try both of them you can cut your scone in half which you need to do anyway and try uh, each way and then tell me a verdict of what you think is best but I'm sure you think cream and jam is better The Princess. So that's the hookup. So is there a significance with the holy coo? Holy? Harry. Harry. Well, we better change our mentality and go to Harry Coo. <laughs> holy Coo. We worship him. His name's Rory. Rory. His name's because. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you have seen one, haven't you? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Quite a few, as you pointed them out. Yes. Perfect. I do like a hairy food. Right. It was lovely. Uh, my name is Paul. I'm going to be with you for this tour this afternoon. We're going to split the tour into several parts. Uh, you're in Liverpool. You can't come to Liverpool without talking about the Beatles, about the history of Liverpool. We're coming right down onto the banks of the river. The river that runs into Liverpool is the River Mersey. Mersey. Those of you of a certain age, and I'm not suggesting for one moment that anyone here can remember the 1960s, but uh, if you do, 
you do remember the 60s, you may remember the Liverpool group called Jerry and the Pacemakers. Yes. yes. And their song, Ferry Cross the Mersey. Well, the, the ferry boat still operates across the river today. It's one of the oldest ferry services anywhere in Europe. So ferry cross the Mersey, cause this land's the place I live. All right, we'll see the places mentioned by the Beatles in the words of their song. It's a rounded building with an empty flagpole is the former bank of Penny Lane's bus. Uh, just ahead of us. Uh, and we're going to pass Penny Lane as we head back into the, uh, the city centre. Uh, now, when Penny Lane was released in the United Kingdom uh, as a single, or you might have called it a 45, it was 1965. Just give them a little nod as you go in. 15 minutes, guys. Five o'clock departure. This is where the Beatles played over 200 times in the beginning of their careers. Well, Beatles, thank you very much. So should we head up? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Which way is up? I'm behind you. Head on up. The old town, the old town. I've met my love. I guess it's wrong. She be she There's a lot of stairs. And every one of them counts. Yes. <laughs> oh, we're almost up. So, where's the bus? Go left and then. We under the. We're under the Mersey River in a tunnel from Liverpool, Liverpool to Birkenhead. And we're making it. The population of uh, Chester, so in the city, in the centre here, is about 77,000 people. And then uh, in the outer areas, we about up to about 300,000. Come out to the north gate. 
North Gate. And then if you turn around and have a look behind you, we were down the, uh, we were down the uh, second turning on the right there from the Testaments. Okay? So always remember you're coming back to the North Gate. And so these walls in Latin are called Munros. And you can access the raiders that would dump out of the Welsh hills and try and try and invade here. So don't forget, we are in a fortress right now. We're in a Roman fortress. The Romans were parading around here and the walls are fully intact. It's really amazing. So um, this clock tower on the back, there's no clock. Um, and that is because they didn't want to give the Welsh the time of day. The Gothic so from this, this angle, it doesn't I'm going to take you around and uh, show you the, the other entrance, uh, the other view. But straight in front of me here, um, these glass doors, that is the entrance to the cathedral. So if you would like to go into the cathedral, it is free. Obviously, a donation is always appreciated. Um, and uh, it opens at 9.30, so don't forget we are leaving at 10 um, on the dot. And so it's... We are departing from up there. So 9.30 here uh, on the doors to go in and I will meet you at 9.45 here to walk back to the coach. If you're not here, I will assume that you're going back to the coach on your own steam to leave at 10. Okay? Alright, so 13th century cathedral. Um, it is quite unique here because most of the architecture is, um, is, is Norman. So you've got these great big beautiful gothic spires on the other side and inside um, there's some really interesting uh, 13th century carvings and in those days uh, the carpenters, you know, they, they, they couldn't travel, they never went to these places where they had uh, all of these uh, animals that they'd never seen so they carve animals uh, from word of mouth from what travellers or what explorers had told them they looked like so on the pews in there, uh, extra points if you find these, on the pews in there you'll find elephants uh, that have got trunks uh, that are like snakes and legs like horses because that's how they had been uh, uh, described by these explorers and that's how they had carved them. So you've got quite a few strange looking animals that are on these pews Side. They're, they're really nice to take some little photos of as well. Uh, so that is the main entrance. So 9.30, be there on the dot. 9.45, just okay, back behind me. Um, and just just here, if you'd like to come on around. Uh, and on the corner you can see their reference point, Northgate Street, Eastwood. And so this stone uh, pillar here to my left uh, with the bobble on top so that is the market cross uh, so that uh, signifies the very very centre of the Roman fortress um, obviously the cathedral, the cathedral is the heart of the city but it went up many many years later so that is the original original centre of the Roman fortress um, and what would normally happen here is um, this is where the, would be the place where um, the town crier would read the decrees um, he would you know this is where news would be um, and this would also be um, a place of public humiliation as well so flogging people who hadn't paid their taxes um, and they'd also use it to do um, bear fighting as well uh, in this area um, and so they still do have to this day uh, the town crier and uh, although I've never seen him I think, he's, I think he stays in bed um, and, it, and nowadays the town crier wears, uh, he wears big robes big red, uh, big red jacket with a big gold necklace and a big hat and he rings his bell and he says oh yay, oh yay, oh yay and then he will announce any of the uh, gossip, news, etc. And he's normally here from Tuesday to Friday. Um, but, as I say, I've never seen all of the original wall here. It's uh, the fortification of the original wall at the bottom. You see where it's all crumbling. Uh, and they're trying to reinforce the entire side of the church there. So they've put the straps around the, the uh, beams there. 
So uh, that's the original, original red sandstone. So all the walls are made of this sandstone as well. Okay. It was the main entrance to the Roman fortress. So if you think incredibly, we are now, we're walking around this street where hundreds and thousands of Romans used to patrol and that is the entrance that they used to come in through uh, with all of their horses and their carts and their chariots and chariots of fire through that gate. It's just amazing to think, isn't it, that they, that they did that. So um, the East Gate clock, that beautiful filigree clock on top of the gate there, um, is uh, there to commemorate Queen Victoria's Jubilee. So you can see at the top of the clock there, a big gold VR, so Victoria Regina at the top. Um, and in 1897, that was the day of Victoria's Jubilee. So this is the other view. So this is the way you can go to the cathedral. Uh, and the view from this side, you get to see all the Gothic spires from this side. This is my favourite. Um, and so if you just walk down to the traffic lights and you cross over, you'll see uh, the Roman Amphitheatre. So uh, the Roman Amphitheatre is quite um, a fine. So if you think, uh, just down the end of that road is where you would have um, gladiator fights, um, you would have uh, shows, you know, you would have chariots driving around, uh, you would have about 800, 800 uh, Romans sitting in that amphitheatre, jeering on, like all, you know, lions coming out of the sides with the gladiators, so amazing, really. Lions, tigers and bears, yeah, oh my. All of, that, all of what you see. This is the Roman amphitheatre. What they did, they dug out what they found and then they put a mural in the background to kind of extenuate the view. You could see where all the bleachers would be. The entrance for the gladiators. And there's a stone at the center there. There's a sign back there, and I, I think it says toilets, but there's a, <laughs> a chain there too. Don't know all of what it means. And there's some uh, spectators enjoying the Colosseum and one of the Roman gates. Are oh, they chiming nine o'clock right now? at the Chester Cathedral. Nice gardens. Noah's Ark. This was from a carnival ride but they thought it would have substance here. Well, this is how the church looks inside. What a beautiful altar. A nice church. Oh, it's nice to see everybody dressed up today. There's a celebration at 10.30 today. Excuse me, the Saddleworth Morris men. What are you guys about? It's a um, joint Morris organization. Um, they do an annual north and an annual south event. Uh -huh. Where there's about five or six teams and we're dancing at various uh, venues throughout. And, and there's a competition? Okay, it's just, it's just oh, fun. You're <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're, 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 oh now, now it's becoming fun. <laughs>
Yeah. So when, so what? What is it? Uh, the after, drinking thing with the Down syndrome. Well, I, I see everybody does have their mug. When does that start? Because I want to be there. As soon as the pub opens. Right. We've tried already, but they weren't open. <laughs> the wall, the Roman wall, extends around the city of Chester, and you can see that there's even a moat. Keep out those bad guys. That's a point of interest. You've also got city walls here that you can walk. Um, they are free to walk on. Uh, you just need to find a little uh, place to get up onto the walls, like there were that, like there was in um, Chester just there. There'll be stone stairs that go up onto the walls, so that's something that you can do. Um, and Conway Castle is a 13th century de defence castle. It's quite uh, an, an over-looming castle. It just uh, looks out over the river Conway here. We are on the castle wall. We're protecting the town of Conway. Well, this is a nice place to uh, defend the city. Get a nice view from what the archers had. And if we had to, we could go to the end here and do the same thing. Good thing they're not the enemy. The, this is the castle and the walls of Conway. And you can see that this is one of the turrets that can be used to get up and go to the wall. And from the wall you can go to the castle to help defend it. Oh, another medieval castle. They kind of grow here. They kind of like the medieval times, you know? Mm, it looks like it. Now we're getting on the ferry. There's a big ferry. Oh, we get pole position here. No lashing here. Boy, this is a big ship. Look at all these boats. Look at all these trucks that are on this boat. And both sides. It's not even near being full. I got to tell you, this is a massive ship, and it is cranking. We left Wales and we're heading for Dublin, Ireland. Right now I'm close to the tower, being protected by the wind, but once I go out into the wind, it could really affect things. Oh, here's the wind coming up. So there's the bridge up there. Let's see how it is in back here. The stern of the ship. Wow. I'm surrounded by wind. Well, they still have some room. This ship is really cranking. So here's a smoking shelter. It's a good thing if you were smoking and you're outside on the deck, it is breezy. You can see over there how people's hair is just moving all over the place. Windy. So we're at the back of the ship and they have, I think, 11 levels. 
So this is level 10 that we are going to. We were at 11. James Joyce Balcony Lounge. So now to figure out how to get to the back of the ship, the stern. Hello, a lot of ship. And there's various restrooms. You could run a marathon on this uh, ship. There is, there's a lot of ship here. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Yes. And now we're looking at the front. It's a little cold out there. Windy. Not that cold, but windy. Dublin, here we are. Here we are on the uh, Emerald Isle. And so... A hundred thousand welcomes is what they say here. Mm. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> in this hotel, and it's right in the centre of uh, of Dublin, right by Trinity College. So it's good right morning. Past what a wonderful Lake District team morning it is in the Lake District this morning. Lovely and fresh, and crisp and damp, <laughs> and all these lovely sheep. It's just beautiful here, it really is. So um, you're going to have a wonderful day today. Uh, we're driving now to uh, Windermere, so the, the town of Windermere, which is on the uh, lake side of um, the lake. <laughs> <laughs> the lake, that would be where it'd be. Uh, Boness, it's called. So um, that's our, our pier port.